from India, Sujan Roy, Head International Business, Passenger Vehicles, Tata Motors. Uh, namaste, everybody. And uh, Eid Mubarak to all of you who are celebrating the festival today. Uh, I would uh, build upon the things that my predecessors went through. And I asked Hemant uh, to start with the presentation. What I'm going to discuss today is about fear. Fear in a post-COVID world. Like our Prime Minister, I have fallen into this habit, good or bad, you can tell me, of creating acronyms. And fear is an acronym which will help you remember the things that we as sales and marketing professionals should be conscious of, should be able to internalize and uh, walk the talk. Next, please. The fear in the post-COVID world. In the next zero to three months, I believe that these fear trends will be at their peak. All of us are experiencing this fear. And as this, uh, we get used to this scenario, the new normal, so as to say, slowly the fear will keep on reducing, but it will never entirely go away from our minds. Beyond a year, I believe that there are going to be certain habits. 15% of the habits will still stick with us and it will still remain with us. Uh, next, please. The first is of the fear acronym is I'm going to talk about the multiple fears which come from F itself, the fear of the things that we as business owners, business uh, stewards should be conscious of. And next, please. Fear of going out. FOGO, F-O-G-O. -O. You have heard of fear of missing out, FOMO, but this is a new fear, the fear of going out. People are currently very afraid of stepping out of doors uh, with masks, without masks. Even those of us who are being brave and walking out, we are still conscious somewhere it is sticking in the back of our head that perhaps I'm doing something dangerous. Fear of going out. And if our businesses are to succeed, are to capitalize uh, on uh, the opportunities available in the period of COVID or in the period after COVID, we have to figure out how to overcome, how to address this fear of going out. If you are in a business like running a restaurant or running a cinema hall, you are in trouble because fear of going out is very real. Next, please. The second worry which really grabs people's throats and shakes them, keeps them from falling asleep at night is fear of economic shock, F-O-E-S. So the fear of economic shock is such that even though that the economic shock has not reached my house, my salary has not been reduced, but I see my neighbor losing his job. I see another person getting his salaries cut and I start conserving on my expenditure. It is only the absolutely necessary expenditure which is important. So tourism, and as Nandana said, uh, Sri Lanka being a tourism dep dependent country, I was supposed to be in Sri Lanka right now and I canceled my tickets. And these are some of the discretionary expenses which even after the fear goes away, it will remain, the fear of economic shock will remain. One of my competitors in America, for example, announced that uh, you can buy a car now. If you lose your job, you can return the car to us and we will give you back whatever money we have taken. No questions asked. That is a fantastic way of going ahead and mitigating fear of economic shock. There must be certain customers who need a new car. And if they have the assurance that, God forbid, they lose their job, they can return the car and get back their money. That would be wonderful. The next one, fear of crowded areas, agoraphobia, fear of crowded areas is very real today. Mm -hmm. Even people like me who actually enjoy crowded places um, are very, very afraid of going into areas which are crowded. Try to imagine an island with 22 million people. No friends, I'm not talking about Sri Lanka. I'm talking about a tiny island called Mumbai 
which is the size of Colombo and has the same population as Sri Lanka. Just imagine how rampantly the disease gets transmitted. You can understand the fact that Mumbai is probably the densest urban agglomeration uh, along with Dhaka and Lagos to understand that social distancing, the moment you step out of your house, is not possible. Therefore, freer of crowded areas is very real. If you are a business owner in a dense urban area where social distancing is difficult, you have to realign your business, every process to be realigned so that the fear of crowded areas can be addressed. Next one. Fear of touching the un unknown. The fear of touching the unknown, the very fact that touching is, is a fear, and I experienced this having traveled to Africa in the time of Ebola. I look after uh, international sales, and my work takes me all over the world. And I was in Africa during Ebola, and I had already fallen into the habit of opening doors with my feet, using my feet to open the doors, waiting until a door is opened by somebody, sticking my foot there and opening it. Fear of touching the unknown is a very real fear. And you will find that many of our customers are going to be very conscious of this. This fear is going to remain for a long time. What are you and your business processes saying about addressing this fear? Today, each and every touch point has become a war zone for us, uh, for customer experience. And we have to be very careful of ensuring that we address this customer fear so that uh, the customer is reassured that he knows that adequate care has been taken in terms of the areas where he has to touch the product actually physically. Next, please. Empathy. Uh, in, the, in the way of the acronym, empathy comes second. But I would say, as many of my predecessors said, empathy comes first. We should know it. In Tata Group, we are actually, all our businesses are maj majorly owned by the Tata charities. A majority of our profits goes into charities. The moment the pandemic happened, all our hotels got reconfigured as overnight stay for the COVID warriors, the, the hospital doctors, the municipality workers, the nurses, the policemen, all our luxury properties became available to the doctors, nurses, and the hotel restaurant started preparing packed meals for those who were working day in and day out in the hospitals, on the uh, streets, uh, taking care of uh, the things that cannot be avoided during Corona. Our restaurants are still providing ready-cooked meals, packed meals to all the Corona warriors. And last but not the least, the group together put together a kitty, a war chest, so as to say, to help in case of Corona of 1,500 crore Indian rupees, which is roughly 200 million US dollars. And that's not all. Uh, we have reconfigured our factories, uh, our processes to take care of all these fears that are there. And our factories are partially open right now. And guess what they are manufacturing? We are manufacturing only ambulances right now. And we are, we are working on medical devices, emergency medical devices, which are not available uh, easily in India. And when it comes to empathy, uh, here is a commercial which was made for Ramadan uh, by some of my colleagues, which talks about empathy. Hemant, can you play the ad? Nee 
की नूर अब की चपहिया करेगी नूर नेकी नूर नेकी नूर कर दे ये गहरे कोहरों को दूर हमेशा मास्क पहनते हो ना हर समय पहनता हूँ आप फिक्र ना करें आदिल बेटा अब्बू का फोन है जल्दी आ आया अम्मी आदिल क्या कर रहे थे आप मैं आपकी तरह लोगों का बोझ हल्का कर रहा था मतलब जहाँ कोई नहीं जाता आप वहाँ जरूरी सामान लेके जाते हो इसलिए इस रमजान मैंने सोचा कि मैं भी जो लोग कहीं बाहर ना जा पाए उनका सामान उनके घर पहुँचा के उनका बोझ हल्का कर दू बहुत खूब बात है बहुत खूब है चाहिए बहुत काम होगा ना नेकी नूर नेकी नूर अब की चिपहिया करेगी गुरूर नेकी नूर नेकी नूर अब की चिपहिया करेगी गुरूर हेमंत प्रेजेंटेशन प्लीज सो वी Have uh, been observing that. Uh, yeah, I need to buy a gift for my mom tomorrow. Yeah, let's buy. Uh, him, I think. Yeah, the video is playing in the background. So we've already started realigning, uh, realigning ourselves to the new requirements of uh, the market. Uh, we have seen, for example, in uh, China. Uh, during the course of covid obviously uh, automotive uh, sales plummeted to nearly zero which is what we are seeing in india right now but what happened immediately after the lockdown was opened is uh, passenger vehicle uh, sales actually went up 66% because people who could afford to stretch and uh, uh, buy cars were avoiding public transport the fear of crowded areas and fear of tra- uh, touching the unknown clearly at play and that is what we are working on right now the next e that we are talking about is environment some of you those of you who are in india uh, would have found that uh, this this particular piece of news a town which is very far away from the himalayas uh, suddenly after 60 years started seeing the himalayas thanks to the fact that pollution had disappeared uh, the subcontinent is normally a dusty place more dustier than most other places that i have visited but it is the human generated pollution which is uh, become a pall on the air we have some of the worst air quality anywhere in the world on the indian subcontinent and people during the lockdown one of the good things that they have realized is with no business activity with no cars no planes nothing no factories the air is suddenly crystal clear the water is clean uh, i have lived in this locate uh, location for 40 years and i have never seen wild animals i have i have seen monkeys jumping around uh, in my society in the place that i live in the heart of mumbai and there are going to be a lot of people who are going to say wait a minute i think this is worth preserving let us keep this uh, let's let's do our little bit to keep the environment clean it really feels great when the air is clear and the mountains the himalayas are visible from hundreds of kilometers away and i believe that this will bring about a definite change in the habits of many people uh, out of a change of heart not necessarily economic reasons next please the a stands for acceleration of digital trends we've already seen that purchases have moved online we have seen that a lot of processes are being mecha- mechanized here you can see a burger making robot uh, but we are going to see that these digital trends are going to get accelerated tremendously usually in india uh, there are certain things which are impulse purchases a bar of chocolate 
sometimes you run out of salt, you want to buy a loaf of bread. These are the things that you would run to the corner shop. You would normally not order this online. What has happened is a few days ago, uh, one of the online grocery stores called Big Basket installed an automated vending machine in my society, uh, which requires no physical uh, interface. It does not require a person to be present. You just need the app and you pay online and the uh, interface, the panel opens up and you can pick up a bread or a can of milk or a carton of milk or whatever, uh, uh, chocolate and ice cream, what have you. And uh, this happening, uh, it would have happened anyway, six months down the line, a year down the line. The fact that uh, all the close, uh, nearby shops around the corner are closed has meant that many of the digital trends that we have been seeing have got accelerated. Unfortunately, the flip side is this will also mean that many of the lowest, the bottom of the pyramid workers will lose their jobs. Unskilled jobs, jobs which are manual in labor will get automated and we will have to think as a society how to accommodate these people. The next one. The rise of uh, self-sufficiency. For many weeks uh, here in Mumbai, uh, we were no longer able to uh, get fresh bread. And uh, that is when many of the people started baking their own bread. What you see in the picture is what we call a pau. The Portuguese brought it uh, to Mumbai and we still bake this bread called the pau. And most of us started baking our own bread at home. And we found that it tastes far better than what we buy from the stores. And that is what is the rise of self-sufficiency. People have experienced homemade bread, the smell of bread in every room of the house. After that, you can't go back to store-bought bread. Maybe for convenience, but many of us will bake our own cookies, do our own things uh, ourselves. Uh, the rise of self-sufficiency, which again will have tremendous implications on the market, on the way things are bought and sold. And finally, the last R is the rise of return to roots. Many of the people who had pieces of land on the outskirts just decided to leave the city, this crowded city, and go back to their little uh, village-like uh, houses and live there. They grow their own fruits, it's a very fertile land and they grow their own vegetables and sufficient number of peoples will go back. I ex expect that from the top of the strata, the rich people who have these little pieces of land outside the big cities and from the bottom of the strata, all the migrant workers who have gone back, if you hear them, many of them are saying that we will be content with what we have in our villages, we'll grow our own food, we will not go to die in the cities. Uh, the plight of the migrants uh, has been one of the great uh, tragedies of uh, COVID-19 in India. And I believe that this will lead uh, to the re uh, return to the roots movement, which we are going to see uh, in the months to come. These are some of the uh, key trends which have been driving uh, the behavior of the client, the customer, the consumer. And that is what will require us to shape and uh, change our processes, change our thinking, and uh, realign our way of doing businesses uh, going forward. That's all from my side. One final slide. That's uh, my contact uh, in case uh, you need to get in touch with me.